Hello everyone. Today we are going to see how the velocity of the mechanism is calculated by using instantaneous center method. So let us see. So sometimes a body has a simultaneous motion of rotation as well as a translation such as a wheel of a car, a sphere rolling on the floor. So such motion will have the combined effect of rotation and translation. In actual practice there are many components which are used in mechanism. So let us take an example. We have the figure of an engine here. So here we can see that. Let us take an example of a connecting rod. The one end of the connecting rod is connected to crank and another end is connected to piston. The end which is connected to crank is having some sort of circular motion and the end which is connected to piston it will have a reciprocate or a linear motion or a trans translation motion okay so here uh, it is quite difficult to understand for the especially for the connecting rod what kind of motion is there whether the motion is a linear only or a circular only actually it is the combination of linear and circular motion so for this kind of links we are going to find out the center about which the link is having some sort of a circular motion so let us see how the center is located in the next slide okay so in figure a we have a link a b a b is the initial position of link after some time the link attains a new position that is a1 b dash and after that B moves, it traces a circular path around point A1 and it attains the new position that is A1B. So in this figure A, AB is the initial position and A1B1 is the final position. Actual. A little consideration will show that the link neither has a whole wholly motion of a translation that is and nor a wholly rotational motion but it is the combination of translation plus rotational motion similarly in figure b again the link ab is there but in this figure the first the point b is having some sort of circular motion about point a and the new position of point b is b dash so a b b dash is the new position of link ab after some time the uh, link ab attains the new position that is a1 b1 so here a b is the initial position and a1 b1 is the final position so in these both figures this this in figure a the link a b is having first a linear motion that is translation motion and after that it is having some sort of circular motion and in figure b the link a b is having first circular motion and after that it is having a linear motion so here it is the combination of linear and trans uh, circular motion so it is quite difficult in actual practice it is quite difficult to identify the both motions separately as we can see that in figure uh, the gradually a link a b moves from a b to a, a 1 b dash and after that the point b moves from b dash to b 1 but in actual practice the velocity of point b is much more faster so it is quite difficult to understand but to bifurcate the linear motion and the circular motion so here we can observe that the link is having some sort of a circular motion so we need to identify in the both the cases for the figure a and figure b the rotation center of rotation about which the link a b moves so i will discuss in the next slide so again i am going to consider the link a b here you can see that initially the link a point a is having some sort of linear motion here you can see that and after that it is having a circular motion so a1 b1 is the next or final position of link a b so to locate the instantaneous setup center of this link or to locate the center of this link about which the link rotates or about which the link is having some sort of a circular motion plus a linear motion so i am going to join the point b b1 and a a1 by a straight line so next i am going to draw a perpendicular bisector of b b1 and a a1 from the center of b b1 and a a1 in such a way that 
they are going to intersect with each other so this intersection point of perpendicular bisector of a a1 and bv1 is actually represents the center about which the link ab moves so this is nothing but the instantaneous center of link a b so regarding this instantaneous center as we can see that if the link is going to again the link is going to change its position from a1 to a2 and b1 to b2 the center is going to change its position so that is why it is called as a temporary center or also it is called as imaginary or a virtual center because every time according to the position of link the eye is going to change its position okay next we will discuss about the space and body center so here again i am going to take a link ab a1 b1 is the initial position of link ab so this curve represents the path traced by the point a1 and this curve represents the path traced by the point b1 so a1 b1 is the initial position so to locate the instantaneous center of a1 b1 i am going to draw a perpendicular sorry a tangent to the curve from point a1 and a tangent to this curve from point b1 so first of all i will draw a tangent from point a1 though the uh, point a1 is having displacement towards this side so i am going to draw the tangent to the curve towards the upward direction so va is representing the velocity of point a1 similarly i am going to draw a tangent to this curve which represents the velocity of point b1 okay vb is representing velocity of point b1 so to locate the instantaneous center i am going to draw a perpendicular to va and perpendicular to vp until they are going to intersect with each other so let us draw a perpendicular to va so this is the perpendicular to va next i am going to draw a perpendicular to vp so this is the perpendicular to vp so here we have got the intersection of these two perpendiculars so this is nothing but the instantaneous center of link a1 b1 at this instant at this for this moment this is the instantaneous center of link a1 b okay so next for the next instant the link is going to move towards right side so this is the a2 b2 which is the new position of link ab so similarly as we have did in the previous position again i am going to draw a perpendicular to this or a tangent not a perpendicular tangent to the curve which is re representing the velocity of a2 and velocity of b2 as the a2 b2 will have the displacement towards the or clockwise displacement towards this direction okay so similarly i am going to draw a perpendicular to va and perpendicular to vp so this is perpendicular to va and this one is the perpendicular to vp so here we have got the intersection point so this is nothing but the instantaneous center i2 for the new position a2 of the link ab that is a2 v2 so here we have got the second instantaneous center for this instant for this particular position of link ab so similarly if we will draw the instantaneous center or if you locate the instantaneous center for the third position it will come somewhere at here and this curve is going to represent uh, this is the locus this is the actually space centroid which is which connects the every instantaneous center so if the link move if the link a2 b2 moves to the third position a3 b3 somewhere at here we will get the third instantaneous center that will be i3 okay so this curve is nothing but the space center right? this is the locus of instantaneous all the instantaneous centers now let us dis discuss about the body centers to locate the body center for the link a1 b1 the body center is somewhere at here because this is the center of the body i1 so i am going to give a name c1 c1 is the body center of the center of the body for the link a1 b1 okay so when the link a1 b1 moves 
from this position to this position the body central c1 is going to change its position so le let us find out the new position to find out the new position what am i going to do i am going to take a distance of i2 a2 in the compass and i am going to put the needle of the compass at a1 and i am going to create one arc at here okay the length or the radius of arc will be equal to i2 a2 similarly i am going to take a distance of i2 b2 in the compass and i am going to put the needle at b1 and i am going to intersect the previous arc so at the intersection point i will get the new center of the body that will be c2 and i am going to join the intersection point with a1 and b so let us see how it happens so here i have to a distance of similar to i2 a2 in the compass i have marked one arc right here similarly i am going to take a distance of i2 b2 in the compass and i am going to intersect the previous one so at this intersection point of these two lines i have found the new centroid which is the body centroid c similarly for the position of a3 b3 we can locate the c3 and if you will draw a curve passing through the c1 c2 c3 it will be like this okay so here c1 c2 are the two body centers for the a1 b1 and a2 b2 so here we can see that for the next position of a from when the link moves from a1 b2 b1 to a2 b2 here right now c1 is uh, for this first position c1 is coinciding with i1 when the link will move from a1 b1 to a2 b2 the ct is going to coincide with i2 so it means that the body central circle is rolling over the space central circle so this is nothing but the body central okay